been a long time since the Steam Deck was announced and released, and now it's finally available for this to come out. Today, I have the one, the only official Steam Deck dock. And it comes in this tiny little box. So let's unbox this, take a look at it, plug it all in, and compare it to the makeshift dock that I made a little while ago. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you, you're watching Greater Than Pie. So, the Steam Deck Dock. Connect your deck. I can't believe it's finally here. I'm assuming Valve has fixed all of their issues with docking. We brought up a bunch of them when we actually made our own dock. So I'm, I've got high hopes. They said that they fixed it and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this actually holds up in practice. All right, not much fanfare. We go straight into the dock itself. And honestly, the most important part of this is just this brick right here. Uh, having a dedicated secondary Steam Deck dock power brick, great stuff. All right, that's that's it. We got, that's everything inside the box. We got the dock itself, a charging brick, and a manual, which, so charging brick, it looks very similar to the one that came with the Steam Deck itself, which again, is the good part because now I can have one be my traveling, I'm gonna take it around wall wart charging brick and the other one can be my dedicated, I'm going to use this only with the dock one. Currently I have it set up so that my Steam Deck dock, my makeshift dock is using my only charger, which kind of sucks. And buying the second charger uh, wasn't really that easy when that first came out. So pretty much exactly what I expected from this. Now the dock on the other hand, this thing is small. So just for comparison, here's my makeshift dock. It's like three times the size. Pretty much the same kind of mechanism. This is like uh, the uh, the angly bit that goes right into the Steam Deck. Comparing also IO wise, let's take a look here. We've got DisplayPort, HDMI, uh, that's going to be for our charging, it's USB-C, Ethernet, and a set of three USB ports. Pretty simple. I mean, there's not really too much to it. And if you compare actually IO wise to what I had over here, I had SD cards, but I did not have DisplayPort. So that's, yeah, it's a pretty decent trade off. Also, I didn't have ethernet, which having an ethernet jack in here is pretty nice. And for docking, you just simply set your Steam Deck on to the dock. It's got a very open back and then you just take this little piece and set it like that. And it's actually shaped for the Steam Deck. So I think that yeah, you guys can see better than I do. That looks pretty slick. Now we can compare that to the Nintendo Switch, which I got right here, uh, which has a very thought out docking system where the USB-C port is on the bottom and it switches down like that. I think the big difference between the two approaches is this kind of protects the screen, but this uh, comparatively, if misdocked, could possibly scratch the screen. Uh, that being said, I don't, I've had my, this is an original Nintendo Switch from launch. Uh, other than some minor damage, it's still worked pretty good. Compared to my dock, it looks better. Compared to the Switch dock, it's not bad. It's small enough that it'd be portable and easy to travel with. Doesn't come with any cables, so I'm gonna have to dig up some cables, but let's get to testing this thing. I mean, we just need a screen, a keyboard and mouse, and I mean, that should be pretty good. I've got modded Skyrim running right here. Let's see what happens if I'm running the game and I dock it like a Nintendo Switch. I think that is the most real use case for this is to treat it like a Switch. It's gonna take a moment. So let, let that load up. We'll get into the game and then we'll see if it comes alive. Docking up station update available. No! <laughs> I have to update the firmware of the dock. Oh, am I, 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 am I gonna be proven wrong? I just got proven wrong. 
I got proven wrong. I thought it wouldn't work. I thought it would be bad. It's still not 100%, but it's better. Okay. Looks like we're sitting at 55 frames per second. That's what we actually, we're sitting higher than we normally do during uh, uh, handheld performance uh, in this configuration. Interestingly enough, it is actually rendering properly outside of the boundary because you can see that the FPS counter is all the way out there. What? What's just happening? to me? Oh, hello. What are you? All right. So let's take a look at what options graphics. So I can get it actually up to at least 720p. That's good. Uh, let's see how it plays. Oh, I had the frame rate locked to 30. That's actually fine. Okay, so I've actually had a bit more time with the doc and I have some thoughts, some interesting thoughts regarding this doc. So for one, I really like a lot of it. The way it connects to the Steam Deck is very seamless, very well thought out. Valve did a really good job here. When it comes to connecting IO, I really like its layout. Everything just comes straight out the back here. It's not too hard to work with. The spacing for the HDMI and display port aren't bad. The spacing for the USB ports is a little wonky. I did have to adjust a little bit, specifically when doing data transfer stuff. Uh, so having a little USB extender sticking out the back of that won't be too difficult, but as compared to the Nintendo Switch dock, which everything comes out back here to the point that I've removed the back piece entirely, it makes it a little bit easier to actually work with. And I think that the airflow is not too bad with this dock, especially because if you take a good look at it, you can see that even at its high, like worst point, doesn't actually cover up any of the vent. So that is exactly what it needs to do. Docked wise, the deck gets hot. This thing does not like doing uh, anything above 720p. And the dock itself in gaming mode seems to only be capable of displaying out in 720p. Now, I don't know if that's intentional or if it's a bug, but if it's intentional, it makes sense because when you dock it, it's going from uh, something slightly wider, it's like 800p, and then dropping it down to 720 puts it into 16 by nine, which is perfect. Now, huge improvements that Valve made. The switch between docked and undocked performance goes like that, and that is great. Controller order still seems to be an issue. Uh, luckily, you can get into the menus and use this controller even when docked completely. The Switch figured this out by essentially de-pairing any of the controllers that are attached to the Switch when it enters docked mode. But because there's buttons on the deck that aren't gonna be on every controller, I don't think Valve really wants to do that. So it kind of makes sense that there are some issues and some wonkiness there. Desktop mode though, does appear to allow you to use higher resolutions. So you do have that if you want to use the desktop mode, which really, I mean, if you're using this like a PC, I guess, but for the most part, I try to stay within the gaming ecosystem because it's actually, well, it's really good. Valve did a really good job with it. But good news is it does take keyboard and mouse controllers pretty well. And I actually have my Xbox controller connected directly to this wirelessly. So, I mean, it does a really good job. You do have to flash your firmware on your Xbox controller if you are gonna do that, by the way. So overall, it's been a really good experience with this dock. And I do have follow-up videos that I'm going to do. They're gonna be more like stress tests of what you can actually do. I wanna get a uh, large powered, um, external hard drive that is my Steam library drive that I have connected to the deck. And I already <laughs> have one thing, this little guy that I am also making a video about really soon. So if you're not subscribed, get subscribed because this does make this dock even better. And the tech that powers this thing could easily be integrated into something like this in the future. So this right here might actually change the switch, might change the deck, may change things for the better in the near future. 
If only this company could stop being so insane with their advertisements. But we're gonna talk about this in a different video. This one's about the Steam Deck dock. Now the big question is, like the Switch dock, am I going to spend a lot of money buying more of them? Because I own three Nintendo Switch docks. There's a travel dock, which is this one. There's one at the TV, and there's my capture PC area dock. I literally can take my Switch from dock to dock to dock without having to unplug a single thing. I probably am. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I like this dock a lot. I like how it looks. I have my extra dock, which I actually have to test to see if it works just as good now. Um, and if it does, then that will be my travel dock for right now. It's wonky, it's heavier, but at the same time, I put it together and I, don't, I forget how long it was of a video. It wasn't that long of a video. So the point is, I have a secondary dock that might actually just work just as well as this one, but I do kind of want more of them. They're so small. I mean, like comparatively, when you compare the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck, you're like, oh, we got Chungus and, and not Chungus over here. Uh, if you use the Split Pad Pros, they're about the same width, but like Steam Deck is bigger and heavier. But dock wise, look at this. Like imagine if the Nintendo Switch had a tiny little dock like this. Oh, I would love it so much. And they sell them, but first party power constraints and all that jazz and stuff. The Steam Deck's a lot better at accepting various power types because it literally has programming built into it to know what's being plugged in. So yeah, Nintendo, I think that on their next version of the Switch could incorporate a smaller dock like this. That is beside the point. We're talking about the deck. We're talking about the deck dock. And I really like it. And I do think that a revision two could have some really cool features. So that is where we're gonna end today. If you are not subscribed, get subscribed because we're gonna be talking about this. This is the M Classic. And we're gonna be talking about this real soon. So if you don't see the video now, and we haven't talked about it, but if you are seeing the video and it's like a couple weeks maybe, and this is out, I would check this out. I may put a, a link to it in the comments directly below because this does take the dock to the next level. So I'll see you in the next video. Wolfie, out.